Hey friends, Mindy here. I want to share with you today these Faber-Castell dual markers. This is um, a requested video by my sweet friend Erin. We were talking at um, retreat recently and she asked me to do this video. So Erin, if you're watching, this is your, your promised video. This is my ode to Erin. <laughs> she was asking about these markers and I did buy the full set. I um, am a huge pen nerd and so um you would be shocked by how many pens i own but um i love faber castell markers and pens and so um they're just such great quality i have an older set of the big brush markers um from from years ago and they're still going strong but what i loved about this is aside from a few different colors they're um these are now dual tipped so on one end you have the big brush marker and on the other you have a fine tip which is a 0.8 which is really really great I love that particular nib you can just do a lot with those so before I get into all of that I will say they do come in boxed sets this is the set of 30 um, but you can also get them open stock by the wolf or God does carry these and I am mentioning that because when this video goes live is the day of the release at by the well and so if you um, if you happen to be getting a kit and you might want to throw in some of these markers open stock to kind of start your collection, they do a special there. So um, if you buy so many, you get one free. So um, check that out if you're interested. I'm not trying to um, do any kind of advertising necessarily other than I just really love these markers. There's a lot you can do with these markers. And so I feel like they're a good investment. Um, but, um, and again, I'm a pen nerd, so I really love them. But I will say, so these are just to give you a few kind of basic things. These are highly pigmented ink. They are India ink, but they are water-based. So what that means is there's some tricks that, and things that, techniques that you can do while they're wet, but once they're dry, they're permanent, which is just great because you can do layering and you can do all kinds of fun things. Um, but it's just highly pigmented ink. These are, I'll lift this up. You can kind of see the 30 colors again this is the box that i bought but again you can buy them individual if there's just a color that you might want to try like even just the plain black just to kind of see how that works for you um it's it's really great this is a good set they have a good variety of colors i have already swatched them out um so you can kind of see i will show you what the inside of this box looks like just so you can see they come in there are three different trays in here of all the different colors and so I'm gonna pull these out and then we'll we'll do a couple things with them um, here in just a moment. But like I said, these are the, um, this is all of the swatches of the 30 colors. Now, I will say when I first opened mine up, I did have some kind of color variants from, um, from one tip to the other. But once I started writing with, and it was particularly with the fine tip, once I started writing with it, um, it, it was, it kind of evened out. So I don't know if like when, they were shipped they were you know because you really do want to keep these markers horizontal I will say that um and so I had I had them but they were just kind of I've had them for a while um but they've just kind of been sitting on my desk and so um but once I started writing with them the colors even out and everything was fine so you can kind of see um this is the tip that you or the you know the mark that you're going to get with the brush tip and then there's the fine liner and the thing that's great about the brush, let me just flip this over to the back side, is that you can really, if you like to do brush calligraphy, um, this is a good way because you can really um, just vary your line widths and you can even do it with, um, with the smaller nib as well. So depending on how much kind of pressure you're putting on there um, it's not so much with this because it's a like a fiber tip but you can kind of see but then you can kind of go back through and even add your highlights this way with the, the same marker and you're gonna get that you know nice shadowing in there I just stuck my hand in, in a puddle of ink so I will say um, your substrate matters when you're using these markers this is some Strathmore paper that I'm using it's a Bristol vellum smooth so this is a really really smooth paper so how you you work with these will really kind of depend, um, the results that you get will really depend on the substrate that, that you're using. So you can see I had a little puddle of ink there that I stuck my hand in, but that's fine. Um, so anyway, back to, back to the colors. You can kind of see here. And one of the things that I love about this particular set is like in here in some of the neutrals, you, they included a warm gray and a cold 
cool gray. So that just works really well. Um, this cold gray one is a great one for shadowing. Um, and so we'll get into that with some of the techniques, but I did want to mention that they, um, they say that they do not bleed. I have never had them bleed, um, but I can't, I won't say, you know, across the board, 100%, these markers are never going to bleed through paper, but that's kind of their, how they're designed. They are light fast. They're odorless. So if you're sensitive to smells, because these are water-based, they're not going to have that smell that like Copic markers and that kind of those alcohol markers do. And then again, once they're dry, they're permanent. But once, when they're not dry, you do have some working time with them and you can layer the color on top of each other to increase the intensity um so maybe i'll just i have this one out 146 so here i'll just kind of show you you can if you just keep you just keep layering it obviously it's just going to keep getting darker and darker i think my lighting is probably not showing that very well but um you can let it dry layer another color you can also layer colors over other colors to kind of mix them um depending on the kind of look that you're that you're wanting to do to do but you can definitely increase them just by going over them with um to increase the saturation so um i can't remember if i said this but the fine liner tip is a 0 0.08 um so let me kind of show you i don't know if you can what that looks like but one of the reasons that I really love this is because I tend to write really hard and so sometimes this the finer tipped um, like micron pens I love micron pens but sometimes they're harder for me to write with um, because I write really hard so I feel like you can put some pressure with these and and your your nib is going to be is going to be safe so some of the techniques that you can do with these markers and why I would say that they are a good investment is you can stamp with them, you can paint with them, you can obviously color with them, you can do brush brush lettering, you can um, you can also do some shadowing, some fun shadowing techniques if you prepare your substrate the right, you know, first. So um, just to start off with, let's, um, I'll show you some stamping. Um, so, I'm just going to, you can do this with clear and rubber stamp. I think they, I personally like the way that the results are with a, a red rubber stamp, but I'm going to show you with both. So I have this little fern stamp from By the Wall, from, um, and I'm just going to take and use the, the brush tip. And the thing about this is you don't want to kind of go in up and down. You kind of want to take... The flat side of the nib as much as you can because you don't want any ink to kind of collect in the grooves um, because it will just kind of create a, a splotch for you but you can definitely color right on this is a clear acrylic um, stamp and you can kind of just color right on there it, depending on even how long like you could color certain parts of it and then um, and then just kind of huff up it on it with your breath and kind of moisten everything and then you can stamp with it and it cleans right off your stamp there's no way i've already done it with this stamp so um, there's no reason to worry about that and then of course you can if you wanted to come in with some color variation you can just use a lighter marker and just come in here and and color or even use the brush tip of another thing to kind of create some shadowing and I'm not going to color the whole image for you but you can kind of see um it's not moving that outer edge because or that you know the outline of the stamp because it is permanent now that it has dried so you can kind of see how that works um it does like I'll show you um it cleans off your stamps really easily so I'm just going to use a baby wipe here I would clean this um off you know you don't want it to mix in with your other things but it cleans off perfectly fine also if you are like mixing your colors um and say you got like a darker color kind of on your marker it's not going to do that but um one of the things that you can do is just kind of scribble it off and um and that darker ink like if you're trying to layer colors or create shadows or whatever um just you can scribble it off and it will clean off the nib just fine and it won't cause any damage so i do want to use um one this is a tim holtz stamp just for comparison um this is a ticket stamp of him of his i just i like the red rubber um stamps and again I'm just going to kind of go along there with the side of the marker 
And again, you could do, you know, color it all different colors. You just really don't want to, you know, kind of go like this also because you don't, really don't want to mess up your, your nib. So if you're going in with like the side of it, it should, should be fine. So um, you can definitely stamp with these markers. And so I always like when you have, you know, a tool that you can use in, in multiple ways. I, I got a little bit too much ink in some of there. So, um, some of the really finer detailed ones might, might, you might get a little bit of ink buildup in there and might, they might not stamp as clearly. Um, but you can certainly, certainly stamp with them. So, um, another thing that you can do is basically kind of water color with them. Now, this part really kind of depends on, like I said, the substrate that you're working with. So I will show you, this is the Thalo Blue. Um, I'm just gonna scribble some color out here. And if you come in, I'm using my favorite um, water brush. You can kind of move this out while this is still, while this is still wet. This, a lot of this is going to depend on the paper that you're, in, you know, that you're drawing on. Um, if it's going to absorb into that paper a little bit more, you can kind of still see the shadow of where I initially laid down that color. You can kind of work it out, um, but like right by now, my paper is starting to peel up just a little bit. So it's it's a technique and you can certainly do it. Um, it really, again, I would just experiment with whatever, you know, paper that you're trying to use. But the other thing that you can do is take this marker and use an acrylic block. You can use... Um, just like acetate or um, like packaging from from something, scribble it out onto your acrylic block, block or your um, acetate, and then just pick it up with your water brush or a, a wet paintbrush, and then you can color and do all kinds of fun things with this. And then while this is all still wet, you have some working time to kind of get this the way that you want to. But the other cool thing about it is you can let it dry and then it's gonna be permanent. You can come back in with another layer, get those saturation layers in there and have really simple shading. It's gonna coordinate because it's the same ink. It's just set more saturated. Or you could even layer other colors over the top of it. But there, it just gives you more, um, more kind of freedom. So you can kind of see this is not going anywhere. So I'm gonna pick up some more and then maybe I wanna add some more blue in there. I think, um, I don't know if you saw the video that Gail did. Um, I can't remember if it was on her channel or if it was on the, by the well for God channel, um, where, where she was painting some trees with the Faber Castell brushes and they turned out so, so, so cute. Um, and so you can just layer it and you just keep layering it as much as you want to. And then, you know, just let it dry. You can build it, build up your layers that way. So it's just a really fun way to be able to color that. And then another thing that they're really good for, and I don't have a way to demonstrate this right at the, at the moment, um, now that I'm thinking about it, but is, um, if you have, if you're a mixed media artist, especially if you really like those kinds of things, one of the ways that you can use these that I think is really fun is if you have like a die cut image or whatever, if you put collage medium or gel medium, matte medium, anything that is basically non-porous and you seal your page, um, one of the things that you can do is you can use one of the, the, the marker and kind of go around the edge of that. I wish I had prepared something for this. I'm sorry. Uh, let me know if you want to like to see a follow-up video where I can kind of show that technique. But you basically, here, like, let me use this. Um, so if you wanted to kind of create a shadow for this image, if I had put collage medium over the top of this, I'm basically making this now a non-porous surface. So once I have done that, you can go in with the marker and you can kind of put the, put the ink down and then just kind of smudge it with your finger and it's gonna create this really natural shadow. It's just a fun technique, especially if you are a mixed media artist and you kind of want those, those depths or you just want the, um, the the shading or whatever but you have to have that kind of in that non-porous surface in order for to be able to do that and you really only have 
you know, a few seconds before it dries. And once it dries, again, it's permanent. So if you want to have that really nice blend, just kind of work in small sections, go around, you can use your finger or a blending stump or whatever and smear it out. And then you'll have a really nice shadow. And apologize, I didn't think about having that prepared for this video, but um, it, it, it is an option if that's something that you're interested in, in doing. A lot of people that do like art journaling and that kind of stuff, um, will will use that technique um it's just a lot of fun to do and just another way that you can use your your markers and you don't necessarily have to shade with gray or black you can shade with whatever you know color that you're wanting to just give something some extra dimension that way and it just kind of gives life to something like that but again make sure that you have a non-porous surface before you do that because the more porous the paper, the more it's just going to like absorb the ink and then it's going to dry. And once it's dry, again, it's permanent. So it's the good thing about these markers. Um, it's one of the things that I love that about them. When I first started doing art journaling and mixed media and stuff, that was my favorite feature about the big brush markers was that you could layer them and they were permanent. So um, it give you gives you working time, but also gives you a permanent so, so that you can feel free to layer other things over the top and it's not going to go anywhere, which also works well if you're wanting to add other Faber-Castell products in with what you're doing, whether that's pencils or, you know, anything else you can, it just gives you a variety of ways and techniques and things that you can do. So, um, anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that answers any questions you may have. Again, um, these are available at By the Wolf for God. That's where I got my set from. Um, and like I said, I, I do have the full set. I, I got all 30, but you can buy them open stock. And so if you wanted to just try out a few, you could certainly do that. I believe also that By the Well has the swatches for the, the kit that, um, so if you're wanting to pick up the ones that coordinate with the kit that is releasing, which will be Thursday when you see this video, um, then you can absolutely pick those up as well. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you'd like to see a follow-up video with some other techniques, um, let me know that as well. I do hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, like I said, feel free to leave those down below. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, bye!